Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about section 8.1 in Luke Hatfield's help guide. It's all about Z binding issues. Today we're going to fix those issues. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. Now we are. So what is Z binding? Well, Z binding is caused by your Z rod not being exactly perfectly straight up and down. So if it's out in the bottom and in in the top or, or vice versa, that'll cause binding in that Z axis where it can't move smoothly up and down. So we want to fix that today. Some of the issues include short or compressed prints, various thicknesses of layers through your parts, and occasionally you'll get clicking of that Z uh, stepper motor. Well, we want to take care of that today, so let's do it. To get this started, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and lower our X gantry down just above the bed. And you want to rest it on something because we're going to take the Z rod out that is tall enough so your nozzle doesn't hit your bed. Then when you have something down uh, like this, I like to screw the Z rod. I don't like to push it down like this. I like to actually screw it down with a Z rod just so it rests right on that tape, just like that. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is go ahead and loosen this top grub screw that holds your Z rod on. And we're just gonna get that nice and loose. You can use the Allen wrench that came with the kit or, here we go. I like to use these uh, bit drivers that I have and that's an uh, H 2.5 bit on that. So get that uh, nice and loose so you can take your Z rod out in the next step. So the next step, we wanna go ahead and remove our Z rod. Now, I found this a little bit tricky because this was clamped in here so long that it was very tight. So what I did was I grabbed a hold of the bottom of my stepper motor and I just started lifting a little bit and the Z rod should pop out Make sure you hold on to that stepper motor because you don't want your X gantry crashing down. Then you can just screw your Z rod out and lower your X gantry down back onto whatever it is holding the nozzle off the bed. Once you get it screwed out, that finishes that step. So the next thing you wanna do is we gotta get these two screws removed so it comes out of the extrusion um, and that's what's holding the stepper motor to the frame. So what I actually had to do because I was having a hard time getting to these screws and I didn't want to strip uh, the screws out is I actually took the whole coupler off of the stepper motor. And then uh, you can use the Allen wrench that came with your set and you can break them loose with the small side and then just go ahead and take those screws out and once you get the screws out that concludes that part of the step so the next step what we want to do is go ahead and we're going to put our z-rod back into the coupler but first i want to point out that these two screws here on each side a lot of our installation videos have us loosening these one to two turns before operation at this point we need to tighten these screws down okay so make sure they're tight and i already did that and then grab your Z-Rod and we are just gonna insert the Z-Rod back down like this and into our coupler. So at this point, I just wanted to make sure that we're in right. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, that extruder motor and lift it up. And when you put your, your Z-Rod back into the coupler, so you just wanna make sure it lines up and it's sliding all the way in just like that. So it's straight and all the way in. So the next step, what we want to do is come on in here and if, if anything is bent, you should see a gap between the bracket and the extrusion here. So for instance, if this was pulled out like this, so you see a big gap, we would go ahead and measure that gap and we need to create a spacer. In my case, when it's all flush and it's all sat in here, there is no gap, so I wouldn't need a spacer in this case, but at this time, 
Once you measure this, you may need a spacer in here if your stepper motor is like this. So if you can't print because this is just pulled way, way out of whack, then what you could do is you could take a couple of washers and, or a washer and put it between here, between the screw that goes in or the bolt that holds it to the extrusion. And that will give you a little bit of a, a spacer per se, so you can get the printed spacer in from Thingiverse. So you can do that um, anytime. If you can't print currently, I would suggest just taking a washer and putting it between you know, this bracket and the extrusion and then inserting your uh, bolt back into the extrusion. That should help you get to printing. Um, you can put everything back together and get that spacer printed. And then when you're done, all you would have to do is take your Z-Rod out, loosen this, put your spacer in and tighten it back in. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and start the reassembly. So now that we know that our space is okay, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the two screws I took out to mount the stepper motor back to the frame. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my grub screw here and get that put back together. I'm gonna to do that now. One thing you may wanna do is just make sure your Z-Rod is straight it should roll very straight like that. If it does not do that, and if it, it rolls all, you know, it's kind of rolling wobbly, your Z-Rod may not be straight and that could be an issue too. Hey everybody, just a quick uh, note. When I put this all back together, I noticed that there was a space between my coupler and the stepper motor. And if you remember when I took it apart, that wasn't there. So. Uh, I reached out to Luke real quick and he did say that is perfectly normal. This coupler should be about halfway up the shaft and the Z-Rod should come down in and be pushed into the coupler and there should be about a two millimeter space between the Z-Rod and the coupler on the inside. So just if you put this all back together and you notice there is a sh uh, space here, um, that is perfectly normal. Just make sure that there's just a little bit of space between your Z-Rod and the coupler on the inside and everything's tight and you should be good to go. Okay, so as you can see here, we reinstalled and uh, reinstalled the stepper motor here for the Z-Rod and there's no space here, so we're good. If you do need a space, we talked about that earlier for the spacer. Um, we installed the coupler at the bottom, which I had taken out to show this video. We've reinstalled the Z-Rod into the coupler and everything's tightened here. Also, uh, I made sure that when I turn the Z-Rod, everything goes up and down very easily. This is actually much better than what I had before. So the next step is just to make sure that the two screws up in here, which I'm going to zoom in on in a second, um, are adjusted properly. This right here is a guard that I found on Thingiverse just to protect the filament from hitting my, uh, my Z-Rod there. This is my extruder here. Um, and I just want to make sure that these two screws here are adjusted properly. So they're all the way tightened right now. I'm just going to go ahead and back them off one and a half turns each. Just like that. Um, you can back them off one to two turns. That way this thing floats in here a little bit better and they're just a little loose. Uh, another note, if you do not have this printed, um, you may need to add a lock washer to the bottom or a second nut to the bottom of this just to hold these from backing themselves out. Um, I, I checked mine. They're, they're not going anywhere since I have this printed. They're pretty solid. But if you don't have something here, um, they do go a little bit further down underneath and you may need to print a or get, I'm sorry, get a lock washer. And you may need to get a lock washer or um, a second nut, and that way these don't back themselves out. So at this point, we can go ahead and use our Z-Rod and screw up the gantry a little bit and remove whatever you were using to hold your gantry off the bed. So I just wanted to point this out. A lot of people ask how easily your X gantry should go up and down. And I just wanted to show you now. So if I have one finger here, if I press on it, it'll go down just like that, okay? Uh, going up, I always recommend using your Z-screw. You can screw it by the coupler on the bottom 
and just go up with it. But if, if you must know, right now I can go ahead and hold the, if I hold the bottom of the Ender 3 there, I can go ahead and push it up with one finger and a little bit of force. I don't recommend doing that. I, I recommend using your Z coupler uh, screw down here to go up and down. Um, but, so you saw down, one finger, a little force, not too much. But up, if you hold the bottom of the frame, it should just pop itself up like that. Now, I, again, I don't suggest doing that because if you do that, it could push power backwards into your board and you can fry your board. Uh, so that's why I always recommend using your Z uh, coupler or the Z screw to screw your uh, X gantry upwards and downwards isn't a bad idea either. Something else I wanted to point out, it's been a couple weeks since I did my uh, X gantry rework video from Luke's help guide and that has really helped. And we've done quite a few things to film over the last two weeks. And something I wanted to point out here is that if I measure this now, we got 85 millimeters. If I come on this side, I got 85 millimeters. So after all the things we've done after that X gantry uh, and printing in between all that, we haven't moved and it's still a straight 85 millimeters on both sides. So if you're having Z-axis banding issues, make sure to check out that X gantry rework as well because that's really gonna go hand in hand with getting a nice clean layer when you're, when you're printing. All right, that's it. Your Z-axis should be fixed and should be moving smooth as butter now. A couple quick things. If you look at Luke Hatfield's help guide, it's in the description below. You can find the Thingiverse links for some of the shims and spacers that he found. Also, there's a couple alternative methods that we did not go over today. If you're really having issues, you can look at those alternative methods and maybe we'll go over those in a future video. But I hope everything's going great. I hope you learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, click the like button below. I really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna get notified when the next great videos come out, click that little bell and we'll notify you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait for the things that are coming up. We'll see you next time.